All right. Um, so good morning and welcome to this um, session on keys to supernatural ministry. Um, we will study about the importance of uh, supernatural ministry from the life of Jesus and what scriptures have to tell us. Uh, we will pray and we will get started. So let's all pray together. I'll just begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for um, your presence. And Father, we thank you that you are equipping by your word. Uh, we pray in the name of Jesus that the uh, Holy Spirit will bring this word alive to us, O God. And Father God, let, um, Lord, what you want to do be imparted into our spirits right now in Jesus' name, Lord. Father, we pray for uh, um, you to guide us and lead us uh, as we understand the supernatural better. I commit um, every single one of us, Lord, and speak a blessing upon uh, each and every student. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. So as the title of the course suggests, it is Keys to Supernatural Ministry. This will help us to move in the supernatural. This will help us to... Um, demonstrate the supernatural through our lives. So the way we are going to do this course is today is just introductory to help us think about why the supernatural uh, might be important to God. And after this introductory session, we will go into the various keys. So um, we will talk about Seven, seven keys that we will cover. We will talk about uh, how one can prepare themselves personally to live out these keys that we, we are going to talk about uh, and how can we continue to pursue the supernatural. So the foundational topic today is regarding the importance of the supernatural or the importance of uh, miracles, the importance of uh, healings, deliverances, and things like that. So it, it's going to be more of a discussion uh, that we will have today. For our discussion, it'll be helpful if we can um, have the notes from APC publication, Ministering Healing and Deliverance. Okay? So uh, if you would like to download that, that's, that's good. But even if you just want to have a discussion, uh, that's also fine because I have the notes here and I will, towards the end, summarize what is given there regarding miracles. So the first question that I want to ask all of us is, uh, what is the supernatural? You have a mic to speak into? Yeah, please speak into the mic. Something other than natural. Okay, something other than natural. natural. Can you explain? Like, uh, if if something happened, like we we couldn't believe with our eyes. Mm. I mean, with our eyes, like mm. the things which which should not happen, which could not happen, like that. Mm. So, like healings, miracles. Yes. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So something that uh, is beyond. The understanding of the natural mind beyond logic, right? Or beyond the laws of this finite world. For example, uh, when you read about the miracles that took place in the ministry of Elijah, Elisha, uh, it's amazing. You wonder how can oil multiply? You know, how can an axe float? How can, uh, you know, hmm, uh, like through the bones? Of Eli, um, was it Elisha? Elisha. Yeah, Elisha, a dead man. How can he come back alive? Right. So it's beyond logic, or, or uh, we're not saying that uh, we can't understand these things. But I'm saying it's it's beyond. Even if we try to understand, uh, it's hard to explain it with what exists in the natural world. In the natural world, we have what we can touch what we can feel, what you know, we can taste, what we can smell. So we function only by our five senses. And we think that only what is possible with our in the natural world, if, if we have proof through these five senses, only those things can happen. If these five senses cannot grasp something, it's not possible. It can't happen. 
right like it, um uh there are so many other miracles in the bible like jesus is walking on water okay how can that happen normally we know by experience what we have seen what we have observed uh, the research that we have done that if you put something in water it will sink isn't it uh, but if you if you are um, using all the science laws and everything you can create something like a boat or a ship through principles in the natural world to actually float on water but otherwise anything that is heavy will sink into water right so our five senses will tell us it's not possible water into wine how can it happen you can't do that you can't do it overnight you can't do it in a minute you need many years and we know that you know there are wineries around the world like they they keep it they make the wine age and only then you get wine but what did jesus do we call it supernatural because it's beyond the natural in a moment water is turned into wine not even like you know grape juice uh, or a derivative of grape but water is changed into wine wow that is supernatural so something that is beyond the natural uh, is what is termed as the supernatural and there are many such you know uh, miracles in the bible we see um the way uh, peter caught fish that also is amazing in one moment jesus tells him you put the net on the other side and he's actually catching fish or uh, jesus uh, multiple multiplied the bread he multiplied the fish how can it happen with just a few um, loaves of bread and two fish how can you feed you know like 4000 men and women accompanying them children so these are things that we call as the supernatural and we also know that in the bible there are healings that are talked about healings what is a healing as far as you know the bible understanding is concerned something supernatural now we know that um it is possible for us to be healed by natural methods i can use some home remedies or i can use medicines or just give my my body some time to recover and it recovers and sometimes we have fever and we just say hey i maybe i should just take a good rest uh, and eat well for about a week or something and then you automatically feel better because that's the natural process but when we are saying healing at least in our class when we use the word healing we are not referring to that kind of healing though it is a natural healing we are saying that the bible talks about supernatural healing things like you know what jesus did a woman was bent over she suddenly now fine she's upright a man is paralyzed but now he's walking somebody couldn't hear they were deaf but now they are hearing and jesus did those things we are not saying that you know jesus told them uh you take some time you take these medicines and through the normal natural process you are going to get healed or you you we also say right like there are so many things provided in nature which is what the science of medicine works on right many things are there in nature we can use them as medicines we can use uh, you know radiology we, we can use the principles that exist in the natural world to also administer healing but that's not what we are discussing in our course we are talking about supernatural healing where in moments something happens which cannot happen otherwise right so things like this are recorded in the bible for us they are recorded in the ministry of jesus so when we say healing we are referring to supernatural healing when we say miracles we are referring to things like water turning into wine which is unbelievable how can it even happen uh, or deliverance deliverance is when um, uh, demon spirits are cast out it was nothing new for jesus you see many places where he did that uh, you see pl places where uh, um, the apostles and the other believers also ministered deliverance so this is part of the bible this is part of what we are supposed to believe okay so we will talk about all these things even emotional healing 
So whenever we say healing, it's not just physical healing. Even emotional healing, supernaturally, maybe we've gone through traumatic experiences um, and, uh, you know, we've not come out of it. God can heal our hearts. Okay. Uh, so there is basis in scripture for us to believe in these things. Um, signs and wonders. Signs and wonders are more like um, uh, something that something supernatural which points to God. Uh, and uh, people may even use healings, miracles. They may call, use the term signs and wonders, but they may be referring to healings and, uh, you know, deliverances and all, which is okay. But, you know, signs and wonders are also part of what God does. So this is uh, an idea of what supernatural is. Okay. Now, I just wanted for us to uh, answer the question, you know, why is the supernatural important or why let, let's make it narrower why are healings miracles deliverances even important for us as believers or are they important okay so let's talk about it what do you think yeah, I think important. they are important okay so if you tell me that something is important you have to tell me why they are important also <laughs> yeah please it actually testifies to what we are preaching. Mm -hmm. uh, it shows uh, that it's like an evidence that uh, God is there, uh, mm -hmm. like heaven, these are all real. So okay. it shows the power of God. Okay. It shows the power of God. Okay. That's true. Yeah. When something beyond the natural happens, we can't explain it. The only way we can explain it is, oh, there's got to be a higher authority who did it. So, yeah, it points us to God. And it's the yeah. evidence that God's power. Okay. Like it's what the... we are preaching and what we are, what's happening is evidence. Yes. Yes. So it's the proof um, of what we are, we are teaching it. But when it happens, it is confirming that whatever we are teaching is reality. Okay, so yeah, it's a proof of what we are teaching. Okay, so uh, again, it's supportive, meaning it's like a proof, and uh, it draws unbelievers when they see what God can do, they start to have interest and put their trust in God as well. So, yeah, uh, same point. Like, we grab the attention of the unbelievers. Like, they will literally, um, they can believe, okay, this is right. Mm -hmm. It, it uh, gets their attention. Yeah. yeah. So, miracles get people's attention. Yeah. Feel free, let's discuss. I mean, even if there are contrary thoughts. Okay. Okay, so they uh, get people to think about God and what He can do. Yeah, uh, it's uh, showing uh, is there is one God who is alive, so yes. people can believe. Mm. So it's um, you know showing us same thing, evidence for God that God exists and He is alive. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, these works demonstrate who God is, right? See, because we all respond on the basis of who we are, our personality, what what we value. So when God ministers healing, when God ministers deliverance, uh, uh, miracles in somebody's situation, as Sri said, you know, we can understand that God is interested in our lives, he's compassionate, he's gracious, so on and so forth. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Any, anything, Sean? No, okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, no, I'm saying, why is the supernatural important? Um, in, or why is the supernatural important in general? The kind of supernatural that the Bible talks about, or is it important at all? That's our discussion. Okay. Essentially, it uh, gives uh, something people to believe in. You know, like um, 
like it, or because of all these things like uh, prince or uh, anand was telling that because of what we read in the bible is happening in the world it's it uh, the what we saying it, it is because what we reading here is, is becoming true it is there's not anything like uh, it's, it's not anything false that is being say, uh, it's been uh, said here mm. so you know like when you see like uh, people who are uh, healing and uh, people are performing like the various types of miracles and stuff like that Jesus performs through them we see that what's been written here is actually happening it gives something for us to believe in mm. okay so uh, again same thing like it affirms yeah. what the bible is talking about and uh, you know that is important isn't it great so we all we're all saying that um, the supernatural is important because it confirms what the word of god says it points to a god it sparks interest in people to know more about god it reveals the nature of god okay so yeah for all these reasons it's very important but do we do we place that kind of importance on the supernatural what happens among circles of believers do we place importance uh, the thing that we see in the bible is that uh, most people believe more in the supernatural than in in god when you focus more on that so when you fo uh, focus more on the type of healing and stuff like that people tend to focus more on that than to actually read the bible this I mean is what i see because uh, if you see here that many people ask jesus to perform miracles and various things but they said already the the miracle of jonah is more than enough for you you know mm -hmm. uh, okay okay thank you for sharing your thought uh, uh, sean but like we'll talk about it i'll share what i feel about your comment is it like how you write the bible actually gives you the importance of supernatural how is supernatural important so we all said that you know whenever the supernatural is demonstrated uh, it points us to god so that that is one thing but now what i'm asking is we know that it's important but for us as believers you know in our um, practice of a christian life or our meetings or our ministry do we really place that important are we giving it attention or is it like yeah it's important but you know it's not really part of our ministry uh -huh. yeah like i think uh, like most of believers and even mo in most of that we uh, give importance to it but we don't actually believe that god can use us to do those supernatural works okay <laughs> okay so we we believe that the bible says these things should happen but the place where we get stuck is can it happen through my life or can i do can i walk in the supernatural okay yeah that's that's a challenge that's where many of us may be struggling <laughs> yeah Okay, so um, Sean is saying that uh, at some places Jesus said that you don't need a sign; like you just have to believe, right? That's that's what you need to do. Uh, but now, when we are saying that these miracles and uh, supernatural points to God, uh, and that's why it's important, aren't we talking about a lower kind of a belief? Because we are depending on the supernatural to believe in God, right? Okay. So, okay. So it, it seems like it's not working together, is what you're saying. But uh, Sean, like we have to look at it in its context, and we have to look at it in its entirety. Now, yes, maybe at one point where um, Jesus rebuked the people and he said that you know why are you looking for a sign uh, i'm already here so he rebuked them in that context because they were coming in with unbelief okay but in all other places if you look at his full ministry it's filled with healings and miracles and so we can't say that uh, jesus did something contradicting 
his own um, you know his own beliefs or his own values because as much as he said that you know those pharisees and those unbelievers were looking for signs uh, he did demonstrate miracles and he told his disciples and i'll come to that he empowered all his disciples and he said now you go right you go you heal the sick you raise the dead you cleanse the lepers so his mandate is very clear it was not secondary for him or he never felt that uh, it it will you know it it is a it is a lower kind of a faith to have all these manifestations and then believe in god it was very much a part of um creating belief or or interest in god so it's not contrary that's my point because you you mentioned that word right it's not contrary yeah it's the same jesus who is encouraging these mir miracles yeah okay sure uh, yeah. so uh, as you as you said as of now yeah. i mean <clears throat> so what what my thought is jesus only said said to us like uh, you you go and do healings and miracles mm -hmm. but the other thing is this this miracles and healings should be uh, a part of our christian life i mean it it won't dominate the whole spiritual life and all when when miracle and healing when when it is happening it definitely should lead to jesus like should lead to the salvation if if we are just projecting this miracles and healings so when we see in this uh, when 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 the first miracle when god jesus did when he changed the water into wine so when we go through the scriptures of the next chapters so the people i mean jesus also tells like he should not he he didn't commit himself to them so because he know them he know the people afterwards when we go to the other scriptures and all after the chapters the people who who are there at when when this miracle happened they are not there afterwards like when when we are doing miracles when we are when miracles are happening that should lead to jesus that's true and the other thing is we should not project miracles to just uh, drag them to jesus so the ultimate thing what we have to believe in faith in jesus this miracle is not should not be the reason to to i mean to drag or to preach uh, about the gospel it mm -hmm. should not be the word. okay so okay that's uh, you know what An anand's view he's saying that they should not become the focus the focus should be salvation in christ the focus should be living a you know like a godly holy life it should lead to that not just miracles uh, separate from salvation and godly life and all of those things and uh, also uh, he pointed out and said that uh, there were times when uh, though jesus did the miracles he identified people who came only for the miracles and it was not about him but it was more about the miracles okay we get that you know sometimes people can um, uh, only be about you know supernatural supernatural without uh, focusing on god his nature and also that that can become uh, that can become problematic okay fine we we get that that's okay yeah maybe most people don't give importance uh, to these uh, things maybe because like maybe they have uh, not correctly understood or in one verse uh, jesus tells you guys come to me because of the things that i am doing tells because i gave you the bread yesterday that's why you are giving coming to me so maybe some people don't uh, give much priority to the supernatural because they understood in a wrong way they are maybe they are understanding like i should not go to him only for miracles so mm. even if i don't have miracles it's okay Mm. yeah so we we can think that way that uh, we shouldn't you know go after jesus only for the miracles that he does but my commitment needs to be bigger than what he can do for me you know it sounds very humble and nice uh and maybe even acceptable but uh, we will see that we should take the focus that jesus had because he is the one who is like pointing to miracles all the time so when god is doing it and when god is wanting it done through our lives we should not try to um, you know downplay it and say 
okay miracle even if miracles are not there it's okay because jesus never taught like that we will come to it in one certain place uh the uh, uh, disciple uh, john is uh, john the baptist is very um sad and upset okay where uh, he is in the prison he was the one john the baptist was the one who looked at jesus and said behold the lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world you know he will baptize you in holy spirit and fire so he is affirming that jesus is the messiah but later on we uh, notice that he comes to a place where he is doubting is this really the messiah because he is not taking up any position of authority he is not uh, taking governance into his hands what is this jesus doing you know is he really the messiah so john the baptist is questioning and at that point the disciples of john they come and they ask you know are you the messiah so he he heals people he demonstrates all the all the miraculous works he does, that's all he tells john's disciples he says i won't explain go and tell john what you saw so what is the meaning of that him being the messiah is affirmed by what he did he healed he delivered so jesus is saying this is important isn't it and you go tell john he'll understand because i'm demonstrating the supernatural through my life when he is placing that kind of importance on you know signs wonders and miracles who are we to say that yeah even if god doesn't do it he is wanting to do it he is very um, serious about it okay uh, and so when we say it's okay if there's no we are not talking aligned to what god is doing and what he's saying that happens okay i'll explain myself further <laughs> before you start bombarding me with questions okay uh, so just relax take a deep breath i'll come to the online students and then i'll come back to the on campus students uh, so about the importance of uh, um, miracles healings and all jack jackin is saying important because it makes jesus more visible as we glorify him through the supernatural it will make us think that this wouldn't have been possible at any cost in the natural okay thank you thank you jackin um nina is saying hmm? oh you can speak out yeah sure nina uh, there's a comment do you just want to say it Uh, I've posted something. Okay. First. Speaking. Yeah. Speaking. I see you're speaking, but we so can't. So what I was. Uh, <clears throat> excuse us, yeah. Nina. Just give us one moment. Yeah. The volume. Is it okay now? No. Do you want me to? Are you able to hear me? uh can you hear me no then i've posted it so i'm not sure okay yes uh, salina please try I, again i i okay uh, are you able to hear me now no Okay, sorry about that. I think we are having some technical issues. No, 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 no issues. No, I've posted it. Give us a moment, Mina. We'll try to fix it. Let's speak. Is it? It worked. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, sorry about that, Nina. It 
doesn't no seem cue. to be no picking up your voice. So I'll just read your comment for uh, today. Our apologies. Uh, it says, yes, uh, we do. It is challenging to see the miracles manifest in the natural. Prayers are answered, but not always. And sometimes it takes time. OK, so for all these reasons, uh, it's the um, uh, like our believing in the supernatural can be challenged. Okay, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Prabhu is saying uh, the supernatural. Okay, I, I didn't get the context, Prabhu. So if you can explain a little more, I think that will be helpful. Uh, Ravali, you wanted to share something. Could you please type it in chat? Because we're not able to hear you. Hello, Nancy. Can you hear me? Yeah, no. I can't hear you. Then. Oh, OK, OK. Yeah, you can speak, Ravli. We'll try it. Um, can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, sorry. I my my thoughts about it is um, I mean why sometimes the perspective of believers being uh, word of God and supernatural as uh, two different things I mean I had that kind of a perspective earlier but word of God is supernatural uh, right everything in the word of God is for us and uh, it has to be in our everyday life not for a certain occasion or uh, special meetings maybe I thought that if we change that kind of a perspective so it will be normal supernatural is natural for every day that's what we live uh, you know to separate it I don't know uh, we always tend to separate it and see it oh what of God because uh, there is a small fear in everybody that okay if I'm going after signs and wonders I might miss the word of God and I might miss uh, concentrating on the word of God but Word of God only is supernatural. It says, heal the sick is in the word of God. Uh, you know, teachings are in the word of God. So it has equal importance. That's that's my thought about it. Yeah, thank you for sharing that, Ravali. That's uh, so true. Uh, the word of God in itself is supernatural. And that's what we're living by every day. But somewhere where it comes to... Uh, demonstrations like healings and miracles there could be a, a struggle to believe in those things so yeah that's right okay any other reason why we may struggle to uh, really be believe or walk in the supernatural Yeah. Okay. Sure. So, um, yeah, there is a comment. Rin is saying that uh, it takes personal preparation to walk in the supernatural, to manifest the supernatural. Uh, and uh, maybe you know, people don't, don't want to make that kind of commitment um, to walk in the supernatural. So, yeah, possible. Possible that uh, that is a limitation for people to walk in the supernatural. Yeah. Any other thoughts or fear. fear? Okay, fear about the supernatural. And I think Ravali pointed out, she said that it can, we have that fear that uh, when we focus on the supernatural, we should not go away from God. Uh, not, not only that fear, like when we do the supernatural happen or not. Ha ah, okay, got it. Yeah. Whether it will yeah. happen. Yeah. Whether it will happen. Yeah. 
<laughs> but this okay. uh, pure faith, like uh, faith in God, definitely will bring the supernatural to uh, demonstrate, right? Yes. That faith is. Um, Sometimes we fear like, okay, my faith is enough or not. Mm. Yeah. So it's all uh, more of like self-doubt and that kind of a thing where we are not sure. Though I believe like, am I going to see uh, this happen? Will it take place? Uh, so we have to have that childlike faith when we pray it will happen. Okay, anyway. childlike faith, but uh, also uh, remember, scriptures say uh, hearing comes from faith comes uh, by hearing and hearing the word of God. So uh, we these fears and self doubts. The more we learn about the supernatural, we are looking at scripture, and our faith should be based on scripture. It shouldn't be based on anything else. So what should be the foundation? If the scriptures are pointing towards um, wanting the supernatural, fine, we'll do it. Uh, but if the scriptures are not pointing in that direction, it's quite simple. We are not going to do it. right? So uh, when we meditate on scripture, our faith can be based on that. And uh, even regarding the supernatural, what do the scriptures have to say? So we will look at the scriptures. So let me uh, now um, just take us to uh, some thoughts from this um, chapter in uh, healing, ministering healing and deliverance, an APC publication. This is the first chapter uh, uh, which lays a good foundation regarding the supernatural works of God, such as you know healings and miracles and all of that. Uh, so here we are saying that there are biblical reasons why we must believe and why we must minister the supernatural. Uh, these biblical reasons are that Miracles, healings, and deliverances reveal the reality and the nature of God. So when God revealed himself back in Exodus chapter 15, okay, verse 26, he said something like, I am Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals you. So today, if I don't believe that he's a healer, I'm going against his covenant name. And what do the covenant names point us to? The nature of God. He's saying, look, I am not a giver of disease. If that was so, he would have told us. He never once said, I, I, you know, I'm going to uh, put disease on you, make you sick. and uh, No. But what is the revelation that he gave us? And covenant names are like God's promise. He says, I won't go back. Covenant is a very strong promise where God is, uh, you know, he, he exists forever. So if one the person who is participating in the covenant ceases to exist, the covenant will die. God has no beginning, no end. And the God of the universe said, I am Jehovah Rapha, meaning I am never going to change. My promise to you is never going to change. You have a sickness, I am your healer. Okay, so you notice that when we, we are saying healing, we are saying deliverance, miracles, it's coming from the nature of God. That's what he does. That's what he wants to do. Okay. So the nature of God, we're not contradicting the nature of God because he said, for I am the law, God who heals you. I am Jehovah Rapha. And that is who he is. Uh, and he promised. There are many passages of scripture. Exodus 23, where uh, you know he said, I, I will read the passage for us. Verse 25, verse 26. Uh, you shall serve the Lord your God. He will bless your bread and your water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of you. And more promises. You shall not, no one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. So as a believer, if I pray and I say, God, you will bless my food. My, my food will be blessed. My water will be blessed. It will uh, impart divine health to me. Okay, By faith, I believe what I eat. Right? Uh, it will give me strength. And then I'm saying things like, um, you know, God will take away sickness from among us. He will take away sickness from my family. He will take away sickness from my uh, church community. And other promises that, okay, there should be no miscarriage. Um, uh, there, there should be no barrenness. And 
God has said, I will fulfill the number of your days. That simply means you will live to a long life. You will live a strong life, right? God does not want anyone's life to be cut short. Okay, these are the promises. And promises are based on the very nature of God, the very character of God. So when we say that we want to pray for people to be healed, for sickness to be removed, for them to live a long life, we are very much in line with what he's saying in his word. Okay, nothing wrong because we are aligned to what God wants to do in people's lives. So look at the nature of God. The miracles that God does are pointing to his nature. The healing that he does is pointing to his nature. You now, when we read about the Israelites coming out of uh, Egypt in Psalm 105, uh, it says, how did God bring them out of Egypt? You no, know, in Egypt, they were all slaves. So we can only imagine that maybe they didn't have good food. They were overworked. They did not have proper shelter. So, uh, all the riches and the blessings of Egypt, they may not have had it. But Psalm 105 verse 37, he said, it says, He also brought them out with silver and gold, and there was none feeble among his tribes. That simply means the slaves, when they came out of Egypt, they were rich, they were strong, they were not sick. How can you explain this? Right? It's supernatural. They were overworked. They were burdened. They were tired. But there was none feeble among them. There must have been children. There must have been elderly. There must have been women. There must have been all kinds of people. But what is God demonstrating? He's saying, look, if you are my people, there's something supernatural. I give you that supernatural grace to walk in divine health. It's aligned to the nature of God. And another thing, I hope you're noticing this with me. He doesn't change. It's the same thing. Right? That's how God is. You, We can trust God because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, forever. It's not like he healed in the Old Testament and he stopped healing in the New Testament. He healed during Jesus' times and now when we say, Lord, heal me, he'll say, oh, sorry, it's what, what year is it? 2023. I changed my mind. He doesn't do that. So it's very consistent. You'll see passage after passage that is revealing the nature of God. It's revealing what God did. And he will continue to do the same thing. I'll read for you one more passage. Okay, Nehemiah 9 verse 21. It says, 40 years you sustained them in the wilderness. It's talking about the Israelites again. Okay, now wilderness experience. They came out and all and wilderness experience is happening. But even there, God sustained them. And what does the scripture say? They lacked nothing. Their clothes did not wear out. Their feet did not swell. Same God, same nature, same work that he's doing. Wherever these people were. In Exodus, they were journeying. Uh, then uh, later, they're coming out of Egypt. Now they're in the wilderness. But his covenant with the people, he said, I am your healer. You know, I won't change. So the psalmist puts it so beautifully. He says that, uh, bless the Lord, O my soul, and uh, you know, forget not all his benefits, who forgives all uh, your sins, and he heals all your diseases. So he, the psalmist had the courage to say he heals all diseases. Because there's nothing contradictory presented about God anywhere in between. From the moment he said, I am your healer, it's the same thing. So uh, the first point that I'm trying to make here is that miracles, healings, and deliverance reveal the nature of God and you know the reality of who he is to us. So they are very important. Uh, miracles, healings reveal the greatness of God. You know, when we look at the um, time when Jesus turned water into wine, that is the first time that Jesus is doing a miracle. Till that time, uh, and even at that point, Jesus said, hey, my time has not come. But since you're asking me, I'm doing it. And in John chapter 2, verse 11, John records, he says, this beginning of signs, 
Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. So, it was the beginning of many other miracles that Jesus did later. Uh, and Jesus was happy. It says, manifested his glory, meaning it showed who he is. The glory that he carried on earth. See his heavenly glory? Something else. But here on the earth, he walked in sonship glory. He wanted to reveal it. Or in other words, he wanted people to see who he is as the Messiah. And he revealed his glory. How did Jesus reveal his glory? Through the miracle. And it's very specific. After the incident, it says he revealed his glory. Not through, you know, the way he was born or the things that he was talking about, his obedience to his parents. Many other things happened before. Jesus did the miracle. But scripture doesn't say that he revealed his glory. This is the first time when he did the miracle that he's saying he manifested his glory or he revealed it. Like, okay, look, I'm the Messiah. Sonship glory. I'm showing it to you. This is how it looks. How? Miracle. A miracle can happen. Okay, so he manifested his glory. And what did it lead to? Nothing bad. The same scripture says his disciples believed him. So did it help the faith of his followers? It did. The miracle actually helped them to have faith in Jesus. It didn't push them away from Jesus. So let's, let's see, you know, what the Bible is saying. The Bible is not saying that you know, the supernatural, it's scary, it's dangerous. I wonder where we get all these uh, pictures from. Like if it's in the Bible, yeah, okay, let's accept it. But from what we are seeing, it doesn't look like God is saying, you know, stay away or uh, take it easy, take it slow, uh, you know, uh, prohibited territory. Uh, when you're mature enough, I will open the door and you can enter, you can see the tread. Nothing like that. He is beginning to show us that I move in these things. So um, it's part of my nature. This is the way Jesus revealed his glory. Okay, it's uh, time up. Okay, fine. So we, we will pick up from where we've stopped. And uh, let's talk about this, uh, okay, class. So I'm just trying to have an open discussion. Uh, we can do that. And... Uh, we, we will build from there. So uh, thank you once again for all that you shared and all the comments as well that have come in uh, from our students. We will pray and close for today. And I'll request somebody in our class to pray. So you can just... Thank you, Lord Jesus. We come before you in the... Amen. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Uh, please go through your notes and let's connect uh, next week and continue.